Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. Happy Halloween 2014 to all you guys out there. Hope everyone has a fun, safe evening. Uh, I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank you all for your support over the last couple of years here with my Life on This Planet YouTube channel. Um, so today I'm talking about the legendary Pink Dots, a band that does not get talked about enough. And this is a monumental task because this band has such an enormous catalog. And for those of you watching this and you're like, I've never even heard of the legendary Pink Dots, well, I'm happy to be your introduction to them. For those of you guys out there that are already familiar with the legendary Pink Dots, um, what's up? So, they started off in 1980 in uh, the UK and a few years later, they relocated to the Netherlands. Uh, it's been a revolving cast of musicians over the years, but the two mainstays have been Edward Cuspell, uh, the singer, and uh, Philip Knight, aka the Silver Man, on uh, keyboards and other various things. The Pink Dots are definitely a band for the more musically adventurous, and what I mean by that is they are a real genre-defying act. Experimental, noisy, delicate at times, um, beautifully perplexing, just all over the board. You know, if I had to generically describe it to someone, I would say as if Sid Barrett was creating music in his bedroom in 1980, if he was uh, still creating music then on a keyboard. Uh, it's, it's definitely out there, um, but as I mentioned at times, uh, really beautiful, sometimes lush, sometimes very primitive sounding especially their earlier stuff. So my first exposure to the band was the album Asylum, which I believe came out in 1985. Um, Echo Police, Agape, and uh, one of my absolute favorite songs by the Pink Dots, Golden Dawn. Um, and I should also mention that I have so much stuff pulled out here to show. But what I did is, uh, luckily the band's catalog is all available up on Spotify, so I made a playlist for you guys to check out and I highly encourage you, this is a band that um, releases albums very frequently, tours to support themselves. You know, they don't sell a lot of albums. They have fans and a, and a following worldwide. So really show some support if you like what you hear and uh, buy from the band. They do have a band camp page and there is just so much stuff available. So if you're looking for a new band to really dig in with an expansive catalog, the uh, Pink Dots is, uh, is probably number one on the list. Uh, so Asylum. Now, uh, definitely more electronic oriented and right around the time of 1990 their um, sound really started to expand and the Crushed Velvet Apocalypse is definitely where uh, one of my favorite ones and I'm going to show probably three of my favorites and then maybe I'll run through some other things but I love you and your tragic beauty, acoustic guitar, uh, beautiful, uh, Green Gang, the, the plotting, uh, creepiness of it and then Hellsville which is this just full-on assault of insanity and uh, Princess Coldheart which is right in that sweet spot of the Pink Dots where it's very nursery rhyme like um, fairy tale and Edward Cuspell's vocals you'll have to um, listen to them they're they're kind of hard to describe you'll have to listen to them and um, and get what I mean by that. The follow-up to Crush Velvet Apocalypse was the Maria Dimension, which is another one of my absolute favorites. The track Belladonna, another acoustic one, um, beautiful with the sax playing of Niels Van Horn, uh, just incredible. Pennies for Heaven is another great one off of that. So I'm gonna take you through some of the other ones, and I know you know this is Friday on the Turnstable, so I'm gonna show you a couple records as well. This is a band that largely um, I found on CD. They're, the vinyl of theirs is pretty hard to find and actually is, is pretty expensive to find as well. Uh, but like I said, there's so much stuff out there. All right, let's see what I pulled out here for this one. Wow, okay, Brighter Now. This is one of their first ones, and this was actually their first one available on CD. I think this came out in 81 or 82. Curse. The Tower. And some of these are released with alternate covers. I think these are the Soleil Moon uh, reissues that came out in the 90s. I could be wrong about that. No, that's right. Um, great cover on this one. Island of Jewels. Any day now. Look at that. I bought that one at Amoeba. Uh, another great artwork there. Shadow Weaver. And there's a part two of that one called Malachi. Nine Lives to Wonder. 
I think this one came out and run in 95. You can see I had that signed by the band at the time. Ryan Moore uh, played bass on that tour. He had a, a project called Twilight Circus Dub Sound System or something like that. He's went on to work with various reggae bands and stuff, and he would play theremin on stage. It was very crazy. Uh, from here, we'll watch the world go by. I got a bunch here, guys. Hallway of the Gods, Nemesis Online from, I think that was 98 or 99, A Perfect Mystery. Um, all the King's Horses. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. I'll show you a couple records. Um, the Golden Age, great one with the song, The More It Changes. Uh, what else can I show you? All the King's Men, this is a, a double record. It had a companion, All the King's Horses, which I may have showed you um, just a few minutes ago. This was from 2002. Tons of compilations, EPs. You got um, Under Triple Moons, which is a compilation of their earlier stuff. Uh, Canta Mientras Puedas, Sing While You May. This is a great compilation that I got early on. The Legendary Pink Box, um, a really cool compilation there. Um, so, I've seen this band live several times. I would say probably, I don't know, six, seven times, I think, over the years. Got to meet them. If, if I find a picture, I'll insert it in the video here. Um, I, I remember I bought this, I think, at their merchandise table, one of their shows. This is a book of Edward's lyrics. Let's see here. I have it signed, like, on the back page here, I think. Let me see here. Sorry. Guys, this video is all chaotic. It's Halloween. Yeah. Signed. Uh, met him uh, several times. I remember the first, I don't know, maybe it was the second time I saw them at a little club in Phoenix called the Mason Jar R.I.P., which is no longer there. My band, Audra, played there many, many times. Um, so I saw the Pink Dots there and I remember they were traveling in an RV. I think this is probably around 1997 and I just remember Edward walking down the stairs of the RV and I just remember him saying to me, this is the worst club I've ever been to. Uh, <laughs> that always stuck in my head. Um, but to Mason Jar, for those of you guys in bands out there, if you've ever played in Phoenix in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you probably played at the Mason Jar. Um, most, a lot of bands got their start there anywhere from Jane's Addiction, Rage Against the Machine, all those bands all played there. Um, back in the, around 1987 or so, um, Edward Caspell and uh, Kevin Key from Skinny Puppy did some collaborations and that yielded the Tear, I'm sorry, the Tear Garden project. This was the first one, Tired Eyes Slowly Burning. But my absolute favorite one of theirs, and I pulled out a whole stack of them here, is the more organic acoustic one, To Be an Angel Blind, The Capture Soul Divide. This one I think is only available on CD and this came out on Network Records. Um, fantastic. Um, more, you know, all the Tear Garden albums are all kind of different from one another but all really good to check out as well. And then of course, Edward has a ton of solo albums as well. I just pulled some of these out. Uh, the Blue Room, Textures of Illumina, Tanith and the Lion Tree, ton of stuff. So guys, I encourage you to check, uh, check this band out and all the various solo projects. Like I said, I'm gonna have a link below to, Spotify, to, uh, to my blog where there's gonna be a Spotify playlist. You can dig in, and I definitely encourage you to take the risk and check out uh, the Legendary Pink Dots because uh, there is a whole treasure chest of gems awaiting you. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.